Hey guys, hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, and a good Father's Day. So, I got a question, or more of a request in the comments section of my Should You Do a Non-Reverse or Reverse and Discus video. Um, and it was asking uh, two questions. One, what's the difference between uh, the Glide Reverse and the Glide Non-Reverse? And also, how to stay in the ring with the Glide. Um, so today I will answer both those questions. Um, I will try, this video shouldn't be that long, but if you watch any of my technical videos, this will probably be a 30 minute video. Um, just cause I'm a big nerd and I like to ramble. So, but I'll try and get straight to the points. So, um, yeah, so let's get to it. So today I'm using David Stroll. And the reason I'm using him is one, I love his technique. Two, and more importantly, he's one of the few gliders that in his career switched from the reverse to the non-reverse back to the reverse. So he he's done both. So I think it'll be way easier to for him uh, to use him as a technical model just because he's one of the few gliders I know that have done a non-reverse and a reverse in, the, in their career. Um, and through far doing both. So, yeah, so, um, it says 20, it says 2220, that's, this was not his throw, uh, his 2020, uh, sorry, his 2220 throw was, um, in, um, I forget which Diamond League, but it was in a Diamond League in 2015, so, he could also just throw in 2220 here, but I don't think it was, but. And then on the right is a 2042. So on the left, we got him reversing. And then here we got him non-reversing. All right, so both really good throws. Again, I, I think this was probably high 21s as well. I don't think this was 22. I think it was just listing his PR. Um, but I could be wrong. I have no idea. I can't see where it lands. So, yeah. So let's get to it. So, he has had success doing both. I think he actually threw his PR with a non-reverse. All right. So, and there have been gliders in history that have done a non-reverse. But it's a it's a very weird revert non-reverse. It's more of like a Jurgen Shaw, it's more of like a discus non-reverse. So, and really, I'm just going to get this out of the way now in case you guys haven't watched my video whether you should be a revert a reverser or a non-reverser in shot put. Actually, I haven't made a video on that because I just think you should reverse in shot put, in rotational shot put. Now, if you're a glider, obviously you can get away with doing a non-reverse um, because it's a lot easier to stay in the ring um, and actually produce power. So, uh, I'm not going to get into any of that stuff because then this video will be like an hour long. But just to let you guys know my opinion, um, and this is my opinion... I've never seen a rotational thrower do a true non-reverse in shot put that threw far at all. Alright? And you guys can correct me in the comments, but I've never seen anybody. And what I mean by far is 21 meters plus. Alright? So I don't want to hear, oh, someone threw 18 meters. I, I don't care. Okay? I'm just going to tell you that right now. Just because someone threw 18 meters with a non-reverse, I don't care. <laughs> Alright? So that's that out of the way. So, we're just going to get right into this video. So, let's answer the question, should you reverse or should you non-reverse in the glide? And the biggest thing is, it's really a personal preference thing. And what I mean by that is, if you want to reverse, which I think is better, I, I mean, go for it. That, yeah. But if you want a non-reverse, I think that's fine. You do have to think about your personal attributes, though. Like I stated in um, my should you do a non-reverse or reverse in discus video. You want to be a little taller if you're going to be a non-reverser. And you want to be a whole lot more explosive. You got to be explosive anyway to throw the glide far anyway. Which is why the rotational throw has become so popular. Um... 
because you know you don't have to be as crazy of an athlete to throw as far as a glider if you're a rotational athlete because you make the ring bigger and do all blah 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 all this physics stuff that I don't want to get into. I almost got into a humongous rant, and I'm gonna try and stop myself about that. Um, so you do have to be crazy explosive anyway to throw far in the glide. That's a given. But that's to throw far in the glide. All right. So. Yeah, that's that's one attribute. And for a non-reverser, you gotta have your technique dialed. All right, just like in a non-reverse discus, you can't get away with as much stuff as you can with a reverse. All right, so if you're not as explosive and can't stay on, can't stay grounded very long, I would recommend being a reverser. All right. Um, there are other things, but then again, it's just personal preference, um, as well, or it's either personal preference or which one you just throw further with and which one you're more consistent with. So that's another thing, because the reason why people to this day still do the glide is because it, it, it is, it is more consistent on average than, uh, um, than a, um, a rotational thrower. Simply just because there's just less moving parts and less things that can go wrong. It's just a lot simpler to do. So, yeah. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's get into how to do both. Um, because it's not the same thing as, especially the reverse, it's not the same thing at all as, um, as a rotational thrower's reverse. Now, you do see some rotational throwers, especially back in like the 90s in um mid in uh early 2000s back when the um the glide was still really popular amongst men um people did kind of do a glide reverse um for instance like john godina or kevin toth or uh or cj hunter are fine examples of that just off the top of my head um ryan krauser's actually hit a couple and you know like some rotational throws like hit some just just because um, unlike some throws, but yeah, it's, it's different. So let's just get into it. So I'm going to zoom in. So we're just going to concentrate on the left for now. So we're just going to talk about the reverse for now and how to for glide. So for here, so we're just going to analyze the second his left foot touches down. So when his left foot touches down, he's in this great position. Love this position. All right. So you notice he's here. And the big difference is you notice that he's not rotating his right foot. All right. And he's a little more up in the air. And his left arm. Okay. I guess I have to zoom out. And his left arm is almost like a jab block. So it's, it's slightly down. And more like a chicken wing into him. And that's because he's not rotating. He's more just pushing oh not okay sorry he is rotating but he's not rotating in the conventional sense of like a rotational shot putter he's rotating his right hip and stuff but he's not really staying grounded his his sole purpose right now is to get that shot put out of his hand and transfer energy over his left block all right so if you notice here he's not really turning he's uh his right foot he's more pushing into his block so he's creating tremendous force forward and up all right now he does kind of turn his right hip okay sorry not kind of he does turn his right hip um so you know you do still have to turn your right hip you can't just not use your legs at all all right but it's more of like a linear strike here see like a rotational thrower would be a lot more grounded and their left arm would be a lot longer here and their elbow would not be like tucked in. So th those are major differences. And then when he reverses, this is more of the bigger part. So he lands here, flat footed. And he looks either down or back. Uh, for beginners and people who are having trouble fouling, I would recommend looking back. So for him, it would be looking at this camera guy. So actually physically look behind you. So when you're like warming up or something or 
um, during the competition, find something to directly behind the back of the ring that you can use as a focal point to look at. And what that does is that that transfers your your uh, balance backwards, which will help you stay in. And if you notice, another thing he does is when this right foot comes down, his right knee is bent. All right. And what that does is because he has that lower center of mass, it allows him to be a little more balanced. All right. So he's here and then he just puts his foot down. And you notice that this uh, left foot is really wide and back towards the ring to help him counterbalance. All right. So it's not in front of him or anything. It's, it's more like he's kind of doing like he's, he's going to stretch his groin. Um, like it's just up in the air, like a yoga position, kind of, and that helps him counterbalance and he kind of uses that left leg to kind of bring him back down. Oops. Uh, I went the wrong way. If you notice that now him, he's looking straight down. So the one thing you don't want to do is look at the shot put and that goes for a for just really anybody that has foul trouble. Don't look at the implement when it's in the air. <laughs> All right, because that's going to shift your balance towards the sector and you're going to foul. All right. If okay, I guess I cut off the video. He he looks at the shot after he's regained balance and all that. All right, but if you notice, the big difference between this and a rotational shot putter is that he's not spinning around after cuz he doesn't have that rotational energy. It's just boom straight straight in and then he just sticks it. So he just sticks the landing. So there's no spins afterwards and whatnot. And he just slams into the toe board. So that's what you want to do. All right. If you're a reverser, that's how you stay in the ring. So you want to land flat footed, bent knee, look either down or back and try and shift your weight. Now, the last thing you can do if you're still fouling is kind of just do like a single leg squat or just like just put your butt down and just go directly just basically do a squat and that will stop you going forward all right and bring you back into the ring all right so that's a, another thing you can do all right so let's get into the non-reverse so again we're going to just analyze his finish so the big difference is, well, he's non-reversing. So what does he do to stay in the ring when he's non-reversing? So he's here. He does the same right uh, hip action, the same block and all that. It's a little worse, you know, because it's not as far. Um, but if you notice, he is up in the air. But if you also notice, his left foot isn't in the air. So if you notice with his reverse, his left foot left the ground. Here, he stays grounded. Alright? So, that's the big thing. He doesn't leave the ground. So, what he does is he, he uses this left foot and pushes it against the toe board to keep him a little back. And you notice it doesn't turn out really until the shot leaves his hand. What I mean by turn out is his left foot isn't turning... All right, it's just keeping straight. So he's here. Now his right foot's off the ground. So he's trans he's still transferring really over his left block. So his right foot is basically doing the same thing. Now if you notice, so he's here. Now to stay in the ring, he kind of does not really a reverse. And this is what I'm saying by like, a competition re non-reverse it, it's a little different so like if you're in practice and you're doing like a technical non-reverse he would just stay here and he wouldn't follow through or anything he would just stick this um uh, and what i mean like he wouldn't drag his right foot forward it would just stay here and it wouldn't go very far when you're actually trying to go for distance in a non-reverse now he's not dragging his right foot forward he does another thing which i think is better for shot put then dragging the right foot. Um, and it's... So he's here. 
and with his right foot, he follows through and he sticks. So he uses the toe board again, kind of like he did with the reverse to stop the momentum. But the biggest thing here is that his left foot is keeping him in. So that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing here is that his left foot is pushing against this toe board and pushing him a little back while his right is going forward. So what that does is one, it keeps a stronger block. Um, and two, it makes, um, it makes it easier for him to stay in because he's not, he's not going too far forward. All right. And then he recovers. And if you notice, he's looking down. And then he only looks at the shot put when he's just perfectly in balance. And someone as experienced as David Stroll, um, who's a multiple-time world champion and Olympic silver medalist and, you know, obviously a 22-meter thrower and all that jazz. Um, the last true great glider, I, I think, uh, him and Tom Thomas Majewski. So someone that experienced, th th they can save a throw. Okay, they... they they can get away with some stuff. If you are having trouble fouling, I would say more still look backwards. All right. Um, but looking down is fine. Looking down is fine. Um, but yeah, it, you could still foul for that. But if you look backwards, it's going to be very hard for you to foul front, uh, out the front. All right. So, yeah. So I hope you guys learned something. Thank you for the comment. Um, like I say in a lot of my recent videos, uh, if you want me to make a video about something, I'll make it. I just got this comment today and I'm making the video. So, um, it's summer. I got free time to make videos. So if you guys want more technical videos, just let me know. But yeah, hope you guys learned something and see y'all next time. Have a great Father's Day.